Welcome back to our coverage of the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational live here from Tallahassee, Florida, as I'm joined here by Kobe and Monte Cristo. Well, let's start by talking about that last game. We needed a break because, man, Fnatic went hard on TSM. I mean, from picks and bans coming out, did you guys foresee that this was going to happen, knowing TSM's history? Because it was still very risky from Fnatic. Just seeing picks and bans, I did not expect this to happen. <laughs> okay, so Cassiopeia uh, is not a really complex puzzle. Yes, it's something different for the top lane there, but it's something with some pretty easy answers to figure out. She's a very vulnerable top laner. Yes, she's good in one versus one situation, but if you have a jungler like Rek'Sai, should probably attract some attention up there. And even if you gank her and you don't kill her, you burn summoners, you burn some of her mana, she got mana nerfs uh, like five patches ago. If you burn some mana early, then sh there's no way that she bullies Dyrus that hard. And that's all that you need to do. Also, you have to consider the fact that you can't run Ghost in the top lane either. So it's only one summoner that you're dealing with, making those repeated ganks even easier and easier. Uh, to a certain degree, though, because it was very interesting that we saw the Scion, Maokai, and Lulu bands coming in, because yeah. those were the only champions that Dyrus played in the NALCS playoffs. So it was a good test, right? And I guess my question going forward is how well TSM is going to adapt. Are we going to see a situation like with SK at uh, IEM where the k same bands kept rolling in and it looked like it had really kind of thrown a monkey wrench into their plans? I think that TSM will be able to adapt, but I do. I would not be surprised if more teams try to go with that strategy. Yeah. It's definitely proven to be successful. Uh, as for the rest of the pick bands, I think the uh, really strong thing that Fnatic did show was the Urgot being a viable pick for them. That was huge. And the bottom lane also played a uh, large part in this win. And it wasn't even just the pick and ban either. I think what really impressed me was the precision coming out of Fnatic in executing mm -hmm. the strategy. It looked very practiced, very refined, and we saw a tighter team than we saw, I think, in the EULCS playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Also, just Rainover being fantastic and Yellow Star with that Nautilus roaming and getting things done. Well, this means TSM, who has three games today, has a game versus Besiktas coming up, and SKT at the end of the day have something to think about. Before Fnatic, and I asked them as well, well, you know, were you influenced at all by the fact that everyone was calling you as underdogs. Of course, they just won versus TSM, but Febivin said, well, no, I don't see us as underdogs at all. Top four, top three. So the question is, do you think that Fnatic looks polished enough if they go standard picks all around and they don't throw people off, can they beat the other higher seeded teams? You mean like... SKT. There, there's, like there aren't just... seeds, right? Everybody <laughs> that got here is, uh, yeah, true. won their finals, but you're obviously referring to EDG yeah. and SKT. Uh, I still give the advantage to both of those teams, EDG and, and SKT. Yeah, I think purely just in terms of lanes, I don't see SKT or EDG losing lane as hard as TSM did that game, so. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm definitely snowballing out of control in this one. Uh, the next game we've got coming up, though, is Besiktas Esports Club up against SKT. This is a David and Goliath story, if we've ever heard one. <laughs> Besiktas coming in to uh, represent the wildcard region. What should be their plan coming in here, Kobe? Uh, going versus TSM? Uh, I said they no, should SKT. try. No, SKT. Excuse me, uh, <laughs> SKT. Um, probably try and focus on getting the bottom lane uh, an advantage. Nardius has been a big part for them, um, and if they can get a good teleport, uh, Theodrin has also had some strong rumble play, you know, a rumble or a Hecarim. Uh, maybe you have some hope there, but SKT just looks so solid, um, and especially with Marin. So there's something that Marin does that very few other top laners do is buy really early home guards on champions that are not Hecarim, just so that he always has his teleport up, to prevent things like that snowballing in the bottom lane, I think it's going to be very difficult for them. Yeah, even on champions like Gnar. So he'll actually forego some tank yeah. stats just to use the rage bar at the exact right time, right? So they play around that very well. I think that energy has to play safe in this lane because Ooh. he it's, it's going to be hard, <laughs> but... The strongest part of SK Telecom, where the highest percentage of their damage comes, is from their mid laner. And energy is arguably, I think, the weakest part of, of Besiktas. And so having that matchup, he just needs to play as safe as, and conservatively as possible. And he knows it. Uh, yeah. He made that Facebook <laughs> post. Uh, he's got a good sense of humor about it. The, Time spent dead runes yeah, for himself. That's, that's uh, definitely, please have mercy, Faker. Yeah, that's definitely the key for them to come in here, relax, and uh, just taking this as an opportunity to show what they got in play versus a team like SKT. We're going to go over to the casters to see that game, Besiktas versus SKT, in just a second. But first, Besiktas talks about what it means for them to represent the international wildcard region and how much they appreciate their fans. Bundan bir hafta önce Türkiye şampiyonuyduk. Ondan sonra 7 bölgenin de katıldığı uluslararası 
turnuvada Wildcard turnuvasında birinci olduk. Wildcard'ı kazanıp daha doğrusu 7 bölgenin birincisi olmak gerçekten güzel bir duygu. Hani hem MSA'ya katılıyor olmak hem de bu 7 bölgeyi temsilen orada bulunmak gerçekten güzel bir duygu. Beşiktaş gibi köklü bir spor kulübünün Espor'da önce olması gerçekten çok büyük bir şey. Bir kere çok köklü bir taraftar grubu var. Ben çok uzun zamandır sahnede oynuyorum. Yani 2-3 yıldır zaten sahnede oynama tecrübesine alışkın bir oyuncuyum. Gerçekten ilk defa sahnede heyecanlandım. Heyecanlanmamam lazımdı ama heyecanlandım. Yani karşımızda öyle bir taraftar vardı ki sürekli beni heyecanlandırıyordu. 4000 kişinin önünde oynamak ve o 4000 kişinin Beşiktaş'ta olduğunu bilmek, bize desteklemesi gerçekten muhteşem şeylerdi. The fans are really nice and they're really supportive and just always rooting for us. That's really nice. So before I got to Turkey, I used to only compete in Czech Republic and that was like really easy. There was no competition or nothing. Now I got to Turkey and it's like better players, everything is bigger. We play in arenas and stuff. We can get to Valkar, we can get to Wurz. And it's like really exciting to be here. Beşiktaş Kulübü Türkiye'deki en köklü futbol kulüplerinden bir tanesi. 1903 senesinde kuruldu. Sayısızca birçok başarıya imza attı. Hatta bu kulübün çarşı adıyla bilinen bir taraftar grubu da mevcut. E, hatta yurt dışında birkaç maçta bir e, desibel rekorları kırmışlığı bile var. Hani bu kulübün bir parçası olmak, bu kulüp adına oynamak gerçekten çok güzel bir duygu. Facebook'a yazdım hepsine baktım mesela fanatiğim. Bir tek fanatiğin çok beğenisi var, 1 milyon üzerinde. Mesela SK Telekom yazdım, 50 bin falan herhalde daha fazla değil. Beşiktaş 5 milyondan fazla. Yok sadece Facebook'ta. Yani şu turnuva Türkiye'de olsa onlar bile korkar bence. Öyle bir taraftar kitleniz var. MSA'ya katılan bütün takımlar genelinde beni en çok korkutan destek oyuncusu Last Boy diyebilirim. E, koridoru çok iyi kontrol etti, ettiğini düşünüyorum. E, açıkçası Last Boy'a karşı oynamak e, benim için gerçekten büyük bir tecrübe olacak. Benim en çok severek izlediğim, idol aldığım ormancı İnsek. Çünkü İnsek'in ismini hareket, bir oyun hareketine verdiler. İnsek diye bir tabir var onun içinde. Bence bu gerçekten gurur verici bir şey. İnsek'in Lise'nin tekmesinin tadına ve bakmak benim için güzel olacağını düşünüyorum. 3 senedir neredeyse bu camianın içindeyim, e-spor camiasının içindeyim. Bu denli heyecanlandığım, bu denli yani gerçekten elimizin ayağımızın kesildiği bir maç oynamamıştım bu wildcard haricinde. Hani hem maçların heyecanı olsun hem arkamızdaki taraftar desteği olsun. Zaten bunun büyük bir kısmı taraftar desteğine bağlı da hani gerçekten inanılmaz bir duygu ve bunun çoğunluğu Beşiktaş ismi sayesinde olmuş durumda. And what an incredible feeling that has to be, knowing that many people are backing you, kind of instantly, like they said, such radical expressions coming from their fans, and now it just bleeds over into esports for them. Yeah, let's not underrate how many teams were at the International Wildcard Invitational, the top in seven different emerging yeah. regions, and these guys were able to come out on top, even though it was incredibly close and competitive. Now they're kind of on the next tier of competition. That's right, hopefully those nerves are shaken. We're gearing up for our next match, Turkey's Besiktas Esports Club versus Korea's SK Telecom T1. So let's check out the starting lineups with a quick roster rundown on the blue side it's Turkey's Besiktas Esports that's in the top lane Thaldren in the jungle Theocles Energy in mid lane Nardius at 80 carry and Dumbledoge at support yeah and of course on the red side it is SK Telecom T1 with Marin in the top lane a Bengi in the jungle Faker playing mid lane for this one not easy who right. bang and wolf the 80 carry and support and we'll need to see how they handle themselves let's be honest the expectation here is for SKT to roll over Besiktas, but they need to make sure they get a strong pick and ban phase. They need to make sure they can do that in game. They got to make sure they can play clean as well. We got to remember that the SKT team that won LCK had Tom and Easy Hoon in it That's for true. all three games. This was also the team, though, that SKT used against CJ Antis when everything was on the line and they were one game away from elimination. So it may actually be their A tier lineup, at least according to them, Bengi and Faker. That's one of the things that gets me about these guys. Some regions kind of put subs in, take them out, make sure they can get the right thing. These guys do it for fun when they want to. Let's put in Easy Hoon today. Let's put in Faker today. But it just makes them stronger. Whichever way they do it, they find 